Hi everybody, this is Chris Petrie. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all my new subscribers. Um, I just wanted to um, have a little fun here and uh, just at the um, at my studio table here practicing on some some just some fun some uh, ink uh, ink drawings. I think uh, this uh, this video is just going to be like uh, working um, kind of showcasing working with inks a little bit um, to just practice on um, tonal values and uh, design ideas, design uh, tonal values in, in our paintings. So here's just some things I was doing the other day and I'm going to try to bring them up close to the ca camera here. So you can see these are like fun loose uh, ink uh, swatches or, or sketches here just you know having fun splashing around doing some uh, ideas you know uh, some shacks here in the uh, in the landscape and some some trees and, and branches and interesting uh, tonal values here some darks some mid-tones very little light here you can see that these these are um, mostly mid-tones mostly mid-tones and very little lights so this would be um, one design uh, idea in, in paintings or in drawings and, and so forth where we use let's say if we figure it up if we figure measurements as a gallon a quart and a pint then this would be a pint of lights or whites we'd have a gallon of middle tones which is the majority and then maybe like a quart of darks so um, if we, we think of it as uh, pint quart and gallon um, we'll see that this pattern is is working out to be the pint of lights the whites again the middle tones would be the the, the gallon and then the quart would be like the darks the, in these two and then here this is looking like definitely gallon of white if we're talking like you know um, quantities of, of paint like if we were if we were thinking of this as black and white paint we would say this is a, a gallon of white paint and then uh, a quart of um, middle tones and maybe a pint of the darks the, the really darks here or it might be equal parts it might be like a gallon and, and uh, two pints of uh, equal amounts of middles and darks but and that's a nice effect too that's a really beautiful effect bright you get the feeling of sunlight so this is like a this I, I thought of this as sort of like a like a desert scene maybe out west somewhere you know like the distant mountains and the hot sunny day some uh, cactuses a nice windmill tower uh, maybe a, a house like a farmhouse out out west somewhere you can kind of feel that right it's like that bright white paper feels like it's warm and uh you get that bright light feeling and hot sunny feeling so that that's really cool that's a cool effect and so that's achieved with that lots of uh, white paper and then the dark shadows of the darks and so this kind of simplifies it too because if you paint with watercolors a lot sometimes it can be challenging when you're thinking of all the colors and the palette and like I guess we as watercolor artists I guess we naturally use a lot of colors because it's so much fun right and so many colors to use and so forth that we like to use a lot of colors in our, our paintings but I think if we work with black and whites once in a while and you can do this same kind of you could do this in like magic markers like sharpie pens or uh, charcoal charcoal pencils um, regular pencils, uh, soft lead pencils. Um, there's a lot of stuff at the arts and craft supplies that they have to um, to create something like this. With the inks, you can get those really nice fine lines though. So sometimes with the pencils, you know, you really have to work hard at keeping uh, the, the pencils really, really sharp. And 
to get really fine lines like some as you see here and as well as this is a pretty small sketch like if we this is a very small sketch so small is fun because you can kind of work fast and and you know this takes you like only five minutes to do something this this size you know so it's maybe like a two inch by five inch or two inch by four inch whereas you know if you wanted to get really super fine lines like this with pencils you know you'd really have to have super fine they make them super fine magic markers like micro micron markers I think they're called um, so you can get this with magic markers too but I guess what the idea though is the the just keeping it simple with the black and white and then you can kind of have fun and do the shading and kind of see how you can work out like shading on things shadows and shadow shapes and kind of get that feel of light and and shadow in uh, in your in your work so let's let's do a few here we'll do a few uh, sketches here maybe I'll try I'll redo these here the ones we just showed maybe I'll do the one the uh, larger one with the mostly uh, whites and we'll um, we'll see how that uh, turns out here I'm gonna just check to see my my camera Okay, so I'm just using a, um, a reed pen, bamboo pen, and some Sumi ink. Uh, this is uh, Yasutomo, Yasutomo uh, Sumi ink. This is really high quality uh, Sumi ink, black ink. This is great once you draw with this and let it dry. You can go over it with watercolor paint. Um, or just water with some more ink and it won't run whatsoever. This is really um, fantastic. This is, um, I found that I can work with this, let it dry, and then I can go over the top of it with any kind of watercolor paint and it won't run or smear. So this is really good ink. And so we'll just do a little fun here with the, so we'll do our idea again here. So we'll go with some, so I'm just going to go with a fun, house here so the idea is just I dip the reed pen in the ink and, and then just kind of work out this is could also this is called like ink and wash a lot of artists will call this an ink and wash where you do your ink first and then you go over with a wash of color so you can go over and uh, over top of this with some nice colors some beautiful colors from your watercolor palettes And then uh, we're going to do a nice little cool, we'll do a cool tower here. I just want to kind of make sure I'm still in the camera. And I'm just pretending this is a windmill, having some fun with this. And that's what's fun about the Sumi ink. You can just have fun and make marks and you can do some shadows. So we'll, we'll do some more shadowing under here. We'll use a brush over here on this side for the shadows. Um, and then here we'll, we'll make some nice And then what we'll do on this here is we'll use a brush. We'll use a brush to do this cactus here. And what that'll do is that'll, if you put this in the foreground, this big, big cactus here, that'll kind of make it look very uh, three-dimensional and give the, the painting a lot of depth and, and excitement. So I'll put that, that larger cactus right here. And then maybe I'll... I'll do a fence here. And 
and some shadows. So we'll say the light's coming from this direction. So we'll have some some shadowing there. This will be all dark, so we'll fill that in with um, paint, with ink. So we'll fill this in with ink with a brush. Then we're going to say over here, we're going to do our distant mountains. And again, this is just fun, having fun with this, you know, and enjoying the the freedom of just having fun and doing some practice things. There's no uh, there's no real pressure. And then. We'll do some more. Uh, these here we'll leave like this. We'll just use the. We'll just use the. Um, and so we'll just have some interesting. Uh, we'll do some shapes here of a doorway. Okay, so that's kind of getting a a first uh, first bit of interesting um, sketching uh, down first on the paper, and then we can go with the. Now I'm just going to take the sumi ink. Now maybe I'm going to go with a little more. I'm going to use this, which is a little more water, not straight ink, but some water mix in there. Then in this tray, I'm going to go straight ink. And this is kind of the fun part here. We kind of do the, maybe we'll do that like that. Then you can keep a, a sponge or a rag next to your um, paint bucket. And this way you can dry off your brush. And then do a little more um, variations in the in the tonal values of the ink you can blot up a little bit with uh, some tissue or a rag or whatever kind of just to give a more uh, interesting look you can add uh, do the same thing in the roof area maybe just on the roof tap up a little bit of ink and then we'll go back in again and we'll do some shadows here so we'll pretend that's the shadow we'll do some more shadowing for the tower We'll do some shadowing for the fence. We'll do some shadowing for these. That one got a little sloppy. Then we'll do. We'll, we'll make this a little more. This is the cactus here. We'll do the cactus like that. A little bit of splashing. Then the distant hills. Be careful around the roof there. Okay, and this is just fun again, having some interesting fun practicing. And you can kind of see how this uh, All right, so that's not too bad. Now, if we if we look at that, it's it's looking pretty good. It's uh, maybe a little bit of sky color. Maybe just do some sky color. That got a little bit funny there. We're just and again, this is just practice and having fun. And then we can kind of zoom in and kind of just see the effect. So we can even just zoom in like this, and you can kind of see the interesting effect you get with the, the black and the white uh, ink and the shadowing. And all right, I hope you guys will try this. Everyone, have fun, practice, enjoy some different uh, materials, art materials, and supplies, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.